okay so the so the way we go about doing this is under three heads okay and uh, even if it is not clear right now it's okay uh, but then after we right as we scroll through the whole thing you can actually come back and look at these three points and you will notice that notice that whatever whatever we do will revolve around these three things okay the first thing is this okay so what we want to do is to build so so as we walk through this whole thing on image transforms we want to build a relation between between uh, data dependent between data dependent and data in data independent transforms right so so in the sense that we don't want to treat them in isolation <coughs> initially we'll treat them as an isolation but then at some point of time we'll try to create a bridge between the two data dependent and uh, no data independent transforms independent transforms and show that the KLT so it actually means that right uh, you know instead of a data independent basis if you were to construct a basis coming out of the KLT that would be optimal I can show that the KLT is optimal so what optimal in the sense that Opt optimal okay I will talk about it later it is in terms of two things and one is a decorrelation of data and second thing is how much of energy can it pack let us say right I mean if you if you if you get a look at the first m coefficients out of n then the first m coefficients how much energy can some transform pack and the more it can pack in fewer coefficients the 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 the, the I mean you would think that right, that kind of a transform would actually be actually be better. So, the KLT is optimal oh yeah KLT is optimal okay so all this notion will come okay we'll come to this notion later so what is this notion of optimality then two to use a tensor pro and to use uh, this one a Kronecker product a Kronecker to use the a Kronecker product a, uh, a Kronecker is for matrices typically but then a tensor product is what it is generally called right when you go to higher dimensions to use because we are just interested in going from 1D to 2D so I am writing it as a Kronecker product 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 as a vehicle as a vehicle okay to uh, systematically go so the whole idea is you can say systematically go right we do not want to, want to suddenly throw something in and then say that right uh, this is what it is and then we simply have to accept it to systematically go from low to high dimension from low from a low dim from low dimensional transform to high dimensional transform so for us it is like yeah and uh, from low dimensional so why is this important to high dimensional transform okay, why is this important because as I said right instead of instead of instead of you know directly starting with a 2D transform okay what we will do is what we will we'll do is we will start with 1D transform that we know okay we will first show how to go from go from 1D to 2D <coughs> using using this as a, as a vehicle a Kronecker product as a vehicle which then means that you know that will kind of that will at least you uh, know tell you that okay this is then possible even when you want to do go for higher dimensions and so on but we will stop at 2D okay we are not going to go beyond that but uh, yeah but then you will be able to appreciate the fact that right that that this kind of uh, you know a progression from 1D to 2D is automatic it is kind of natural okay. So, so it is like saying that you know suppose I write down FMN uh, or whatever FKL if it is a if it is a 2D DFT so write it as whatever FMN you know summed over m and n e power minus j 2 pi by n right, m k plus n l. Now, one way to say say that uh, say that we extend 1 d d f t to a to a 2 d d f t is this, but then you would lose all the all the all the underlying sort of a structure that exists. So, simply say that okay accept this is a this is a 2 d d f t you will accept, but then the point is that you will not see that you know that this can this can get a this can naturally come from a 1 d you know it looks like yeah right there is some j minus j 2 pi by n m k that is what you use for 1 d but it looks like yeah right there is something but then that structure is not obvious right when you look at it this way. So, which is the way which is the reason why I avoid doing that right it will be simple in fact to do that just to introduce d f t that way or you know a 2 d d c t that way but then unfortunately right it does not reveal the underlying structure okay. So, we will rather go through this and then show that uh, show how this is a Kronecker product and all comes into the picture hmm, to in order to help us 
go from a lower dimension because then you will automatically know how to go to a higher dimension and so on. Then the third point, right? So, all that we talk about will revolve around these three things. Third is to show uh, the relation between between the, the system matrix. So, again see at that time okay, when we talked about a system matrix it was for an LTI or an or an LSI so sort an imaging system right. We just saw some structure we saw that if it was LSI it was actually a W block circle and matrix if it was 1 D then we said it should, not should be a circle and matrix, but then we stopped with that right we did not go, go any further. But now in the light of these image transforms right that are there uh, instead of just kind of say looking at these transforms as something that act on images. You can also kind of uh, right look upon how these how these things play a role when you have to go from let us say one domain to another I mean in the sense that let us say you know instead of thinking I mean it is the same way that you interpret interpret let us say a convolution to uh, to the Fourier domain as a product. Now, you can kind of uh, you know you can take take a signal take its Fourier transform and talk about what happens or you can take the take a convolution right between two signals and then and then kind of right apply the Fourier transform and talk about the output as a product of the transform. So, so in a similar vein right we want to see how the system matrix what is its relation. So, for example right. So, for example, when I write uh, suppose let us say I have a I have a simple sort of a 1D 1D LTI system this is H let us say whatever right and uh, let us say input is X or okay input is F okay and then out comes G. Hmm. Now, we know that we know that I can write this as right G is equal to say HF okay is a vector and then we know that we can write this in a, as a circle and matrix. Now, uh, now this operation is simply a convolution now if you want a want a, want a Fourier interpretation for that okay, then what happens is if you if you can actually think about applying the Fourier transform now what will you do you will take this DFT matrix multiply uh, you know act it on G okay, and then and then you will say okay, if I applied phi on the left then I need to apply phi on the uh, phi on the right side also I will get phi HF, but then right beyond this point looks like looks like I am stuck. Right, because because I want a I want a relation that will relate the DFT of G with the DFT of not this H but then the small H, if this capital H of course has entries, okay, which are which are filled with the small H and it has zeros, and then and then I want to be able to say relate the DFT coefficients of of F. Right now this is not not really an image transform, but then right this is again the role of a transform that is coming in, and therefore right what is this phi's relation to this guy H now? Right. So, so, so this phi must be something special for this H, which will then kind of say enable you to kind of uh, enable you to relate the DFT coefficient on the left as a product of the DFT coefficient of the filter, which is small h, and uh, and the DFT coefficient of f. Right. So, so it's not immediately obvious. So, so, so when I'm writing this, right, this is what I mean. So here, it's not about taking an input signal and then trying to apply a transform. It's more about more about you know having a system matrix coming in now. Okay, which is that H guy, and then trying to see what uh, what what kind of H has relationship with what kind of transform. So this so again, right? Certain transforms have certain affinity to to the structure of H, which also reflects later when you have a covariance which could have similar structure. So uh, okay, so the so the way this this kind of say, this sort of say rubs off on data as well as a system, right? Is kind of somewhat similar. Okay, yeah, this will all become a little more clear right after we go through all this. But I'm just saying that the same action that that the same affinity that is that it has for H, a similar affinity it'll also have when you show it a covariance, right? That has a sort of structure similar to let's say H. But then H can H, H generally will not be symmetric and all that. So 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 that's why right. I'm not I'm not making a general statement, but I'm just making a loose statement that that the action on H that you see in terms of the system matrix. That's why if you if you look at what I'm going to write next relation between uh, system matrix structure for LSI LSI systems derived earlier derived earlier and the structure of the covariance matrices right that is what I meant. So, it is not just for H Okay, so system matrix is one such example. It will also have implications for covariance matrices on which right you might actually wish to act. Covariance matrices. Okay, so so in a sense, right, these two these two are together. The system matrix structure for the LSE system data and the structure of covariance matrices to the diagonalization property. 
to the diagonalization property to the diagonalization property of diagonalization capacity no diagonalization capacity of different unitary transforms. See once we set the stage right then then it is better uh, rather than start doing one by one right without without sort of having a feel for why we are doing it ok. So, what this actually means is so, on the one hand right what right, what is this uh, what is this unitary transforms affinity to a particular system matrix in terms of in terms of diagonalization and both are both are in terms of diagonalization, but then when we when we when we look at diagonalization here this is like saying this diagonalization throws light on how let us say a convolution becomes a product in the Fourier domain. The other diagonalization of a covariance matrix has to do with a data kind of decorrelation. So, how you interpret it will change. So, there we will not interpret it as as a kind of a system there we will look at how does how does a particular transform decorrelate data right. So, so if you if you actually diagonalize a covariance matrix right what it means is that you are choosing a new set of bases where uh, where right things have become uncorrelated and and you know and you know decorrelated data is actually nice to nice to handle right because there is a lot of this correlation. So, it is like saying that if, if y and x have a high correlation why should I send both right I may lose a lose you know uh, lose a little bit, but then I may be ok with it. So, I may I may I may simply send x because then if I send you x I mean you know roughly what y could be like. Uh, whereas, uh, whereas if uh, ok all that you can do provided you are able to move to another domain where this kind of decorrelation happens correct. So, so in that sense in that sense this you see this uh, and again there these uh, unitary transforms have, have have a role to play ok. So, so they have they have a role in a sort of a general sense ok. Um, if you kind of read these three points right hmm. ok having said that now now let us ok now that we have set the stage right. So, so, if you kind of as we go through right you can always walk back to this to this slide and you will know that we are somewhere right anything that we talk about we will be in one of these three points.